I just want to thank you for coming to the service tonight. I know that we had a big potluck you were invited to. If some of you stayed for that, we really appreciate it. And Wednesday night Bible study, I know it's maybe not part of your schedule, you're busy working, or you have families at home. We understand that. We don't want to take too much of your time here. And I know you guys, you're here to play some basketball, all right? What's, we're going to get some basketball in. Don't worry. I'm not going to take your time from that. If it goes a little bit, I just want you to sit and listen for maybe 10 more minutes. That's all I ask. And then we'll get into right, right into playing, okay? Um, so first I want to tell you guys about a basketball player. Maybe some of you have heard of him, or maybe some of you have never heard of him, and I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't. His name is Melvin Turbin. Melvin Turbin. Now this, this player, he played in the 80s. He went to Kentucky University, and he was a pretty good ball player. He, he led their team in scoring, rebounds, blocked shots. He got them to the final four, two out of his four years he played in college. He was a very success, successful player. He was a very hard player to guard. Many teams had to do a whole strategy of just how to stop this one player. You would say he was, he was really good with his craft and his mechanics and his practicing of the game, and he really loved the game of basketball. So then 1984 comes, and if any of you guys know, that's the year Michael Jordan was drafted. 1984 not only had Michael Jordan, but it had Charles Barkley, Hakeem Olajuwon. These guys are MVPs, champions, Hall of Famers. And Melvin Turbin was drafted that same year, sixth overall. So yeah, he's not first or second, but being behind Hall of Famers is definitely not a disappointment. He had, a, so far, a good career. He's going to be a successful NBA player, right? He gets drafted to the Utah Jazz, and this team, that they're, they're struggling, but they draft him. We're going to build around him. We want him to be our foundational player for the rest of his career, that we can have him as a building block. We can use him to be that next step to get to the playoffs or championships, whatever is needed. But Melvin Turbin, right when he is drafted, he, he gets paid. He starts getting a little more popular. He realizes that all that hard work he did in college and high school is now coming into fruition, right? He's in the NBA. But that was about it. He, after that, his points, he started his rookie year to 10 points per game. Like, oh, we expected a little more. Maybe he'll have a big jump his second year. And it went down to eight. And it went down to five. Mm -hmm. And by his fourth year, he was only averaging two points per game. Original player that they wanted to build the whole team around. They didn't even sign him to a rookie contract extension. They didn't even want him on his team. He got cut. And because he got cut, no other team in free agency even wanted to pick him up. This player who may have been so good had so much potential and he just let it go away. And after that, you know, he has that rookie money still and he, yeah, he's done with basketball and he worked so hard to get there, but maybe he'll do something else, right? So he tries to go into sales and it doesn't work. He tries to go into any type of work field you can think of. He just tried a whole bunch of new stuff because he had the money to do it and he wasn't too worried financially. His main gig that he really wanted to do was to be a security guard. Now, because he's a security guard, he had to get a license to conceal carry. And that power got to him. He started spending his money recklessly. A guy that had millions from the NBA had basically nothing. He had five, six, seven women that he would see each and every month. He would go to different places to watch and be the security guard for different cities or counties. But in reality, he was going just to find more women and because all of this pressure that he had as of a washed up NBA player or never been player that could have been something, it wasn't enough for him. That money he could have saved, it wasn't enough. And because of that, Melvin Turbin took his life and committed suicide. Now a player that he could simply ask, what is enough? He almost had everything you could think of successfully in life. And some of you may have awesome jobs and awesome families and you do good and that's great. But guys, I'm going to tell you here today what we learned about in church just an hour ago or so is that what we do here on earth is not enough to get to heaven. The Bible tells us that our pastor used to preach. That's the God's word right here. And it tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So like I said, if you want to help a neighbor, you know, you want to do a good act of kindness, a good deed, there's nothing wrong with that. But you're still falling short of God in heaven. For all have sinned. What do I mean by sin? What do you mean by this word sin? 
that yes, maybe you've heard of it, and our pastor kind of mentioned it a little bit in the service of sin, which is a complete separation or difference from God. But I want you guys to think of the story of Melvin, with him going around trying to find women, with him having all of this money and not using it wisely or spending it recklessly or not living his life for a purpose, or maybe he was into drugs or alcohol or he cussed or whatever it may be, whatever sin that was, that is what is the difference between us and God. I want you to think today, maybe it was when you were a kid or maybe when it was now, but I'm sure we've all lied before. I'm sure maybe we've cheated before. I'm sure maybe we wanted to, hey, can I get an answer to a test in high school or a quiz in college maybe if you guys went to college, I'm not sure. Little things like that that we may not think of is still a difference because God cannot do it. God is perfect. God sent his son, his perfect begotten, only begotten son, Jesus, to come into this world to die. Not only to die, but he died for you and for me. Like I said, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God, but it also says for the wages of sin is death. Now some of you, like I said, you have a good job and you're successful and you make a lot of money. And Melvin here, he made a bunch of money. He had great wages in life. But our life wage when it comes to eternally is hell. That is a place that we deserve. I know that's a, a word that's not used often. and Our pastor mentioned it, but guys, I want to be very clear tonight before we get to playing basketball that hell is a real place. Guys, that I don't want to see any of you, and God doesn't want to see any of you, and our pastor doesn't want to see any of you guys die and go to hell. Before we play any basketball, I want us to be very clear that, yes, our sin is going to take us to hell, and no, we don't want to go there, but guys, there is something that is enough to get us out of hell, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to this world to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus, in the Bible, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God, the creator of the universe who created you and me, said, but God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <coughs> Guys, so this love that God shows, and maybe you have a love for your wife or for your children or for a friend or for a relative. Guys, the love you have for them is awesome and great, but God's love is even greater and powerful than that. And he loved us so much that he sent his son to die. So you're saying, I've sinned, I know I deserve hell, I know Jesus came and died, but what now? How do I get to heaven? What should I do? Can I talk to you? Can I simply just come to church each and every week? Guys, like I said, there's nothing wrong with doing good. But it says, for whosoever, that means all of us, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not you might be saved. It's not you could be saved. It's not if you keep going to church and you do this and you do that and you do this. No, it's for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. It's a promise. Shall be saved. So you guys want to make that decision today, I invite you to close your eyes, bow your heads. I just want you to simply think of the words that pastor said in the message. Don't think about basketball yet. Yeah, we're about to play. Don't worry. The gym's still here. I'll extend the time so we can play a little longer. But first you must, number one, realize that you are a sinner. Realize that because of your sin, that is what is separating you and what is not enough to get to heaven. But also be thankful for the next step to realize that Jesus, the Son of God, came to die on the cross for me, for my sin. So that because of his death, because he was buried from me, because he eventually rose again, I can have life with him forever. So if that's you and you want to make that decision today to accept Christ as your Savior, you can follow me in this prayer if you'd like. You can pray to your, by yourself right now. These words is not what's going to save you, and it's not going to be coming back to church or staying and letting me know afterwards. What's going to save you is simply your belief and trust in Christ as your Savior. So if you'd like to follow me, repeat in your head or whatever you'd like, you just simply say, Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that my sin, I deserve a place in hell. But God, I know that you sent your son to die for me so that I can have a home in heaven. Dear God, I'm trusting your son, Jesus Christ, and him alone 
to take me to heaven. Father, thank you for loving me and for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, every head bowed still, every eye closed. If that was you and you made that decision, would you raise your hand? If that was you today and you made that decision, I see those hands. Now, every head, head, up, head up, you guys can look up. We're going to get some basketball going. Um, thank you guys for coming out to the potluck and for the service. If that was you today and you did make that decision, myself's going to be here. Pastor's still going to be sticking around for a little bit. If you want to come up to us and talk to us, let us know that decision you made. We'd love to see you back next week or next Sunday. But we want to talk to you. We want to celebrate with you. Um, if you have any questions, too, or any comments, just let us know. Um, we'll get the games going. We'll get the teams going. And we're ready to go.